Okay. So hi, welcome to Fabric Stamping. So my name is Erin, or in the SCA, which is a historical reenactment group. My name is Algetha. Um, I answer to either or hey, you works fine too. So today we're gonna go over fabric stamping. Um, I will go over some of the various different um, techniques. I'm not planning to go over a lot of history, but after the basic technique class, if you wanna stick around, I'm more than willing to talk about actual, what, what I know historically about fabric stamping, as well as how we use it correctly or not correctly in the SCA and stuff, which I don't have a problem with. I just do like it when people actually know when something is correct or not. Okay, so most of you have probably seen things like wood blocks and stuff. Or if you think back to maybe even elementary school crafts, you may have carved a potato and used like paint. We're doing the same thing, okay? Um, there are multiple types of stamps that you can use. Um, I don't have any linoleum ones because I just really don't like them. Um, you can at several craft stores, you can actually find some pretty cool rubber stamps. Those are usable. Okay, you can use rubber stamps. Most of what we're gonna talk about is going to be actually like wooden stamps. I will share one of my favorite sources. Um, however, you can also Google wooden uh, stamps for fabric and you will get lots and lots of vendors. One thing I would pay attention to is size, okay? Because if you're expecting a stamp that's this size and you get something, you know, this size, you might not, it might not work quite how you planned for your project. Okay, so I'll go over sources for stamps in a minute. I'm actually gonna start back a little bit more at the beginning. So when you're stamping, oh, when you're stamping on fabric, you do not want to stamp onto the fabric on top of a hard surface, okay? So one of the things, one of the first things that you're gonna want is a mat of some form. And these are, these three are all gardening pads. Um, I think most of them came from either like Home Depot or like the 99 cent store. So they're, they're very cheap. I tend to like the ones that are actually, this one is my favorite because it's, thick, but it's got good give, but as it also has a little bit of resistance. This is my least favorite because it's squishy. Okay, so this one I don't use as often, but I have multiples because um, when, I, when I teach this as in person, it's just useful having multiple pads. Another option for people who have access to Harbor Freight is they have packages of floor mats. And one side does have like texture. You don't want to use that side, but this side is actually for use. Okay. And I think it's like five bucks for a pack of like seven, seven or eight at, at Harbor Freight. I actually use these to back archery targets, but they will also work for fabric stamping. Plus, you don't care if you wind up leaving painted pattern bits on top of them and they'll last forever. Or once you're done using that one, if you've decided it's got too much background paint, stick it on a hay bale and put an archery target on it. Okay. Other tools that you will need. I get most of my fabric stamping supplies um, other than stamps and stuff. My paint, I generally use a uh, Speedball fabric and block printing ink. Okay, I get this from Dick Blick Art Supplies. I use this predominantly because I don't have to iron it. I just have to let it sit for a few days. It's kind of washable. If you wash something enough, it will fade. But if it's on something that you don't tend to wash very often, it'll last fairly well. Um, but it's made to be washable. It's made for use on fabric. Um, you can also use some people, if you go on Facebook, 
There is a um, fab, a, a print, a block printing fabric group. And if you follow the post there, you can actually see there's a huge variety of materials that or mediums that people use to stamp or paint fabric. And that ranges everything from acrylics with or without a medium to make them more flexible, all the way up to house paint. Okay. And you also have things like jacquard inks. I haven't really played with most of those just because I have a bunch of speedball ink and um, I'm kind of using what I know works for me. So the other things you'll need if you're using this kind of ink, as well as something of the other kinds of inks, is you will actually need what's known as a brayer. Okay, so this is a, I use a hard rubber brayer because you really just want the paint getting on the surface of your stamp. Okay, so that's what this looks like. Okay, this is a four inch rubber brayer. And what it does is, I'm going to take this and then I'm going to put um, paint from one of these tubes onto a piece of glass. This is just convenient to me. This is actually a Pyrex pie plate, but you can actually just even use just a piece of glass from a picture frame. Okay, they also sell specific pads for you to use. Um, I'm kind of a little cheap on that. Why pay for something that is specialized that is in reality something simple? Okay, so I just use these because I have three of them and they fit well in my class traveling box. Plus, when I've got paint in them, I'm not worried about somebody tilting it and the paint running off somewhere. Okay, so in regards to those are the basics. The next thing that you really want to make sure you have is stamps. And I have gotten, I have like rubber stamps like these. No, actually, let me grab my block one. So these are ones that I actually got at Michael's of all places. And periodically you'll find ones that actually have historical designs on them. Okay, so I've actually done a fair amount with these designs. So some of them are fairly, uh, are actually based on extant designs. Um, so rubber stamps are usable. The one caution I would add with rubber stamps is they're the exception. You don't want to use a pad under the fabric when you're using a rubber stamp because it'll start blurring and smearing because you've already got the give, but it's in the stamp. Okay. For the most part, I'm going to use things like, I prefer wooden stamps. Yeah. Hang on just a second. Okay. So. One of my favorite vendors for stamps is what is a place called Tie Dye Textiles. They are in the SCA. Um, and I think it's like, it's Katmandu Designs is I believe what their actual business name is. And he does a lot of stamps that are very useful for the SCA. He will base some of them on historic designs. Some of them are not as much historic designs but are kingdom specific. So if you are in the SCA and you have a specific um, thing like such as, you know, this is Kaid's populous badge or, um, you know, various different symbols that are associated with populous badges from various kingdoms. I think he's got all of them. I haven't paid that much attention just because there's a lot of kingdoms that I don't need their populous badge. He also has several stamps on there that are historic and he will cite where they came from, okay? So he does do a lot of recreation stamps as well. So I highly recommend you know, him as a source of, uh, for stamps. His work is very solid. I've used his blocks many times and they work very well. Plus he does fabric stamping himself so he does test the blocks that he makes, and that tends to limit the possible problems you're likely to run into. Okay, so another person that I've actually in the SCA that I have gotten um, stamps from is uh, Cameron Lewis. 
And this is actually, he's taken artwork from some of the SCA artisans with their permission. And also this is actually a friend of mine up in the West drew this artwork actually for a tattoo for her and stuff. But these are Scythian style horses. And my daughter is horse crazy. Okay, she absolutely, there is no such thing as too many horses, except for that she doesn't actually really want one because she doesn't want to take care of it. She just wants to imagine herself riding horses 24 hours a day. And then this is also another piece of artwork from another SCA artisan. I don't believe he has a website. These ones were caught, I got through him uh, via Facebook. So if you search for Cameron Lewis and message him, he tends to post the stamps that he's making as part of his Facebook page. One of the things that I will caution you when you're looking at stamps is smaller stamps are easier to manage, okay? So when you're first starting out, I wouldn't start with anything like 10 inches or huge, okay? So this is actually somebody who had been, who comes over and fabric stamps with me pretty regularly, but this was her first attempt Actually, see if I can hold that up. If you notice, this one's a really big stamp and stuff. That's this one. So this is a 10 inch stamp. We actually can get a really good uh, transfer from this stamp, but you literally are going to lean into it. And, you know, as she puts it, you practically act like you're trying to hurt your stamp. Other, class, other stamps and stuff for my class. This is just, I mean, this was actually my daughter who was just playing around in one of my classes and she didn't have to put any much pressure on the smaller stamps, okay? So when you're looking at your stamps that you're, look, that you're making and planning a, a, a project, make sure you practice first on a waste piece of fabric, okay? Because you're gonna have to learn based off the, uh, the size and the shape of the stamp, how much pressure that you're going to need to apply. Okay, so one of the examples on that is, is this one. This is a long and thin stamp. If I just push it down onto the surface, a lot of times what I'll get is only half of this, especially if I, I'm right hand dominant, I tend to push harder with my right hand than with my left hand. So you want to be aware of that when you're pressing your stamps down to make sure that you're pressing them all fully hard down against the surface. Okay, so that's just some of your basic background stuff. Um, so in regards to, any questions on any of that so far? Okay. So, for example, I actually have one stamp I have not gotten to use yet, so I want to use that one. Um, so if I were to take, oh, materials. So I do fabric stamping in the SCA, and I tend to do it on pretty much either linen, wool, or silk. It work fine on cotton. However, I don't know how well the ink works on synthetics. I do know at least a few people who have used it on leather, but I have not heard back from them how well it lasts. But I do know that some of these stamps can be also used on leather. So for example, this is a piece of wool. If you're stamping on wool, it's actually, you want it to actually be a very smooth wool. Um, and it's no different than if you were stamping on uh, silk or linen. Uh, no, most of my stamping is on linen. Um, let's see. What color am I going to do? I am going to do. Oh, and the speedball ink comes in all kinds of colors. This is the smallest tube. I just get the smallest tube because they last me for a decent amount of time. And because I like to use. I wasn't sure how, what colors I was actually really going to wind up using much of. So if I were to get a larger tube, next time I actually replace my uh, inks, um, white is a very commonly used color. Um, 
And I probably would actually use like the gold or the yellow because that tends, I tend to, those aren't colors that I actually thought I would use more of, but they, but that's what I wind up doing. So here is, let me go ahead and, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to actually just put some of the ink on my glass surface. And then I'm going to shift a bunch of other things out of the way. So this is just for basic stamping. So I'm going to take my rubber brayer and I'm actually going to just roll it against this ink. And what I would suggest doing is you're going to want to roll it in multiple directions. Okay. So when it's still goopy on the glass, it's likely to be goopy on your stamp. Okay. And you don't want goop. You want it to actually have a nice even layer. So now if you notice, I have this stamp is my brayer is basically coated. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to just lay it against my stamp and I can actually see if it's completely covered or not. Okay. So I am going to make sure that I roll the brayer until I have the color of ink on all of the surfaces. So I want a nice even coating. And then what I am going to do is I'm going to push my block, place it carefully, and then I am going to actually push and apply a decent amount of force. Don't worry overly much if you tip it a bit. Um, that way you make sure it's actually fully e evenly applied. And then I'm just going to lift it up. Okay, so at this point, here is what, whoops, I don't know how much shadow that's in, but that's what that looks like. Okay, so as you can hopefully see, whoops, oh, and when it's still damp, it will transfer onto your other fabric. So here, I basically still have that same design. Okay, if something goes wrong, because we know that always happens, right? Okay, so if something goes wrong, the coolest thing, and one of the reasons I use Speedball is because you can wash it out. So if you, oops, you can take water and like say you wind up with just a smudge of the ink outside of your design, you can take a toothbrush or another small brush and water and you can actually scrub that part out, okay? It usually takes a, a period of like, I think it's 24 hours before it actually sets. And at that point, especially if right after you've done it, it is not that difficult to remove it with water. Other things when you are stamping that are useful to have is, Q uh, sorry, toothpicks and a paintbrush, okay? Because when I stamp, sometimes I'm not gonna get a perfect transfer. If you'd want to, you can actually take the paintbrush and I'd recommend a small uh, thing of water as well because it does tend to be thick. You can take the paintbrush, take some of your paint and touch it up, okay? The other thing, the reason why you want a why a toothpick is sometimes important is actually, I know I have one of my stamps that has this problem. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually one of the first stamps I ever got. And if you notice, there's a section right here. So right here where you can actually kind of see that it's got ink in there. I will literally, when I go through to wash this, this is left over from a class and stuff. I will actually go through when I've wet it and I use the toothpick to remove any area where the ink is gummed in, okay? If you are stamping a large amount, plan on washing your stamp, paying attention to when it gums up, how gummed up it'll get will depend on the design of the stamp. So if your stamp starts looking like it's got ink inside the ridges, wash it. Wash it, pat it dry. It doesn't have to be fully dry to still work well, okay? You don't want it sopping wet, but you can literally walk away from it for 
you know, five minutes or so and the wood will soak up any excess moisture. Okay, so, um, so, okay, so you've already stamped something um, and now you actually wanna make a project. So there's multiple ways that you can do things. So some of them you can actually uh, plan out um, where you're gonna want to have certain things. So if I have a piece of fabric and then I want to move that. If I want to actually make, actually, hang on just a sec, I'll grab you an example. Okay, so this is the dress I made for my daughter with horses. And I didn't wind up stamping the entire fabric because you don't always have to. Um, especially if you're doing Norse, we don't really have examples of fabric stamping on Norse garb. Um, we have a few from like neighboring areas and we have one example of fabric painting from Burka. However, this is still something that you commonly see in the SCA. And part of that is borrowing things from, you know, more like Rus or Slavic areas. So here, this is, I just went ahead and did the horses playing around the hem. Well, you don't wanna just start stamping it around the hem, right? Because you're gonna either wind up with a big gap. So you do wanna measure this out. So what I would suggest doing is, there's multiple tools, of course, you can use for that. Um, if all you've got is a fabric tape measure, mark this distance of exactly where you wanna place your stamp. Okay, so if your stamp is, you know, this, this wide, measure your stamp, even if it's, even if you ordered a five inch, make sure that you know exactly what's, what uh, probably helps if I use the side of the tape measure that actually shows the right number for that side. So here, if I want to do this stamp, I know it's five inches. So what I usually will do is I will give a kind of a rough guess on how, just kind of figure out how far I want something apart. And then I will take the circumference of a hem on a garment. I will measure how wide it actually is. And then I will, I will basically um, add like two inches between if that's what I decided. And then I will divide it up to see however, how much adjustment I have to make to the area in between. And then what I'll do, is I will actually mark the fabric. And oftentimes I'll actually draw grids. So I will actually draw a five inch, uh, five inch square to place my stamp inside, okay? The two things I use to mark my fabric, I'm lazy and this is something I actually learned to do when I was sewing a long time ago, is I draw on my fabric with soap, okay? So if you, especially if you get like a lot of those little teeny hand soaps, like you can get from a motel and all. Otherwise, if you have that bar of soap that's starting to get so thin, it's about to crumble apart. I'm a big fan of repurposing. So soap now is what I use to draw on my fabric. So, and the nice thing is, is, it makes a really visible line, okay? It makes a very visible line that's not gonna stain your fabric and it's not, and it will wash out easily, okay? The other thing you can do, especially if you're not planning to wash something or you're trying to keep it minimal, is you can actually get sewing chalk or you can actually get just regular kids chalk. Okay, and stuff, and that will it literally give you a pretty solid line too. So I actually grid out and plan exactly where my stamping stamps are going to go. If I'm doing a full sheet of fabric, I will literally measure it out each point. Um, if all you have is a tape measure, that works fine, but you're honestly, I think you're better off with at least a ruler and if you're gonna be doing this a lot, this is the best tool ever, 
Okay, this is also my favorite sewing tool. Because if you do rectangular construction and you're drawing rectangles on a bunch of fabric, it's heavy enough that the fabric doesn't shift under it. So you make less chances of mistakes. And if you're drawing a line, you don't wind up with the, the ruler moving and having to try and reset. Okay, so let's see. Any questions so far? I mean, I can go th back through um, and go over some like just different things that uh, if you run into problems that I've run into, but um, I'm just trying to make sure I'm covering the basics. We can also walk through and do a few more stamps, um, but. I was just curious, um, well, when you're planning out, what about stamping over like seams of clothing? Is there a problem with the seams? Um, actually, I don't usually have a problem and I don't iron my seams. Um, so if, okay, so I do, even if I don't, uh, some of my seams I hand sew, but even if I don't hand sew them, I hand sew how I put the inside of my seam. So I actually do basically what they did at Headbee, which is fold it in and then whip stitch it, okay? And I do that in part because linen, this works fantastic. I don't ever have linen seams separate. Because like sometimes if you sew them, if you do something like modern, like zigzag or serge the edges, Linen usually likes to laugh at you and pull out, okay? So I'm kind of like, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna, it's not going to fall apart ever. Um, and um, so I, this is actually kind of, if you think about it, it's kind of lumpy if I lay it on the surface. However, does it look like there's much of a problem there? I literally just stamp it flat. I mean, I'll use my hand to smooth it to make it as flat as possible. And I can actually see where it's at. And if I hold it up close enough, you can see if I pull on the seam, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there, but that gap will relax when it's being worn, especially if it's draping. Um, so any other questions? I was wondering about the difference between the wooden blocks and rubber ones. Okay. Uh, oh, that reminds me, I should also mention linoleum. Um, okay. So personally, um, I don't use the rubber blocks that much. Part of this started because I tend to slowly ease into a craft because I have way too many crafts. So I'm really cheap, especially when I first start. Um, because I also know that I, I probably don't have enough time for the cra all the crafts I do. So when I first start, I tend to go with what's easily available to me. And, you know, I think I got the, like some of the rubber stamps at Michael's for like, you know, three or five dollars because I had a coupon or they were on sale. Um, then I also ran into some stamps at Joann's of all places. So this particular stamp wound up costing me with like the coupon, I think it wound up costing me like $3. So I was able to sit there and go, okay, let's test this out. Um, one thing I will caution you with on your blocks, when I wash them generally pretty immediately with water, don't worry if they stain the wood. Um, most of my wood blocks, I don't actually have heavily stained unless I've had students at, in classes who didn't wash them very well and I didn't realize it or something like, because I've had a few classes where I didn't have a good water source to wash, okay? You want to have a good water source to wash. And the other thing that'll help you is if you have a very soft scrub brush, okay? You do not want it to be hard and bristly because some of these stamps, especially if you use some of the commercial ones through places like Joann's, have a paint coating that is you will actually remove if you actually scrub it with a normal scrub brush, okay? This is actually not wood, this is resin, okay? Um, just because those are the ones that are fairly commercially available. I personally, you can actually carve your own stamps out of linoleum blocks. And that's a piece of wood with like a linoleum coating over it that you can actually take wood carving tools and carve your own block. 
I don't like those because the linoleum after a while tends to warp. And sometimes the surface gets a little funky and I wind up with more splotches in my stamping. So I'm not a big fan and actually, hang on, I'll show you an example of that. Okay, so this is a piece that I'm gonna wind up touching up. I mean, it's not, if from a distance, it's not bad. But if you look, this was done with a linoleum stamp. You see how I get those blotchy bits inside the um, design? I don't get those when I have a wood stamp. Okay, so that's one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of the linoleum. However, if you're going to carve your own stamps out of wood, some things that you want to learn from me now are, don't carve it out of oak. It's a bad idea. <laughs> you are likely to bleed, or at least if you're as klutzy as I can be, you will bleed. Um, I didn't actually know it was oak. It was just a piece of scrap wood in the wood pile in the backyard. And I thought, oh, that looks like pine. I was wrong. Um, if you are going to carve stamps, I'm looking for one of my stamps here. <clears throat> this is okay. I was actually, one of my friends had a very heavily stamped outfit for coronation garb. And one of the things that I made was a set of dolls that matched their outfits. And there's a particularly, it's just fantastic double Eagle stamp. It's actually out on the tie dye, uh, Tra uh, tie dye travels web uh, website, which actually let me actually see if I can share screen on that and show it to you because I'll show you the stamp. It's it's beautiful. Um, okay. Oh, where's okay? There we go. <clears throat> okay, it's on. It's one of these, but if you can notice. There's a bunch of really cool designs that he's got on this site. Um, Double headed eagle is in here somewhere, but it's like huge. So it's like, it's like this tall on the stamp, but I was trying to make it for a small little rag doll. So I actually did a carve this to try and mimic the stamp. I don't know where the hell it is. Uh, it used to be always up towards the front. But he keeps always putting new stamps up there, which I'm not complaining about. But as you can see, like here you have several different commonly used badges. Here's the Aitenbelt Sun, you know, Athelmark. Um, you know, so you have a lot of various different, you know, symbols. You have here, this is a the uh the Rus uh game board. Now, which is in a stamp. So, and he's got several different kinds of critters. I don't know where the double eagle one is though, but it's actually, it's a period piece that he recreated, but it's a very, very large stamp. And, um, you know, so I didn't want that. So this is the easiest thing if you're going to carve wood stamps with is to actually use basswood. So if you go to things, places like Michael's, they actually have little wood carving blocks and stuff. And the wood is super soft. And it's soft enough that you can draw your design on it, trace it with an X-Acto knife, and then just use a set of wood carving tools to just clear things away. Okay, so that's personally what I would recommend in terms of doing your own wood carving. Um, the other thing is, is it doesn't have the stuff that you get there isn't going to have knots because if you've not, if you're not used to wood carving, if you hit a knot, you've got a problem. Okay. So it's very clean wood. So I'd probably go with that. If, however, you have access to pieces of pine or other soft woods, those will work as well. I have like a list of other things I wanted to go over. 
Uh, any other questions? Okay, so I was trying to make, yeah. I was wondering about grid patterns um, because you can't see through the block to make sure that it's lined up with the next one. Okay, so Would yeah. Your fabric? Yeah, so what I do when I'm actually making that grid, so if I am taking, so if I've got, okay, I don't wanna use the block with paint on it. So if I've got this particular block, it's in a square, right? So first I'm gonna decide if I'm doing it this way or if I'm doing it this way, okay? And what I will do is I will actually take the soap or the chalk and I'll actually trace my stamp. So one of the things I can do is I can trace my stamp and then I can just place the stamp inside that grid or that block that I've already drawn. The other thing I can do sometimes is I will just measure it, especially if it's just, a, uh, it's not tilted or even if it is tilted, I will actually just measure it and I'm not gonna actually bother measuring it, but say I have a five inch block, I will sometimes just draw like the two lines that it's gonna be in between. And sometimes what I'll do is I will take that line and like, you know, every five inches or so, I will just put a hash mark and then I'll use that to guide where my corner sits. Does that make sense? Yes, and I'm assuming you have to make sure that it's outside of your printing area. It's really- You do want it outside of the printing area. Um, I have not actually had it happen where I didn't get ink sticking because of it, but soap by its nature would work as a resist. Mm -hmm. So the ink would not, the ink would not saturate the fabric at that point. So, and you also have, so examples on this, this is a stamp I traced on my placement mm -hmm. because I couldn't just fit this in a grid. Right, it's a regular. Yeah. But a lot of your stamps or some of your circular ones, the circle one, you can still fit this within a grid. But one of the things that I would recommend doing is because if you look at the back, mm -hmm. which part do I want to put down? So if I've put my paint on and I'm like this and I'm like, oh crap, is this lined up? I would generally um, do something like here. This is my actual bottom of my design make a mark so you can see where that is mm -hmm. and then line that up with your grid work okay so on here what i would actually do is i would put the four cardinal points and then i would make sure that that fit within a square that i drew on the fabric because at that point i my stamp is sitting within that grid so it's not overlaying those lines okay but at the same time, that way I also know that my stamp is in the right position. And yes, I learned this one by experience after stamping something sideways. <laughs> um, and actually it was, it was actually something I had actually made for uh, using the, uh, the Kaid cross stamp. And in, it wound up working out inadvertently because I wound up instead of doing, it's supposed to be like this, I did it like, I'm oh, sorry, I did it like this. And um, it wound up on sleeves. So when the sleeves fell, they actually wound up like this. <laughs> so <clears throat> that was a dumb luck move on my part, <laughs> but I wouldn't count on that, you know? So any, um, let's see, any other questions on it? Um, I don't, I mean, I use it for some Norse stuff, we, like I said, we don't really have many examples of fabric stamping per se from that time frame. So Viking Age fabric stamping, we have some at like uh, Moshabaka and a few other places that tend to be more on the Russian side, but we don't even have that many examples from there. Most of the examples we have of actual block printing are later period. 
So you actually will see it a lot more like 12th to 14th century. However, it's also a good way of, especially if you're not into doing large sections of decoration on your fabric, say embroidery or something like that, oftentimes people will use the fabric stamp as kind of a fake embroidery, or they can also use the stamps as a template for their embroidery. I've actually had several people in my classes who are like, um, I have like a small, uh, a small stamp that I wouldn't recommend generally for fabric printing, but it was like, oh, it's leaves, that's pretty. And that was one I had in my kit from when I first started playing with it. And she's like, oh, nonsense, that'll be perfect. Stamps fabric, and the next thing you know, she sends me a picture of embroidery over the stamp. So she didn't actually care that it had super thin lines and hardly showed up. It showed up enough for her to be able to embroider over it which I thought was really inventive and cool. Um, let's see. So um, if you are making garb and you are going to be doing a, um, like a grid pattern, the other nice thing I would recommend doing is cut out your piece first, okay? Especially if you've got something that you're just gonna have a, a a printed piece of fabric on just like one of the pieces, like say you have a yoke, stamp the yoke before you sew it, okay? Because if you don't want that same stamp on the other fabric, you're gonna have to either like tape it off or put something over it. And that's gonna be a step that you have to do when reality is, is you could literally just put the cut out piece draw the grid lines on that based off of how it's gonna be positioned in the exact right size. And then, you know, put your grid block, start from the center and work out or, you know, from the top and down. So you have it all exactly placed how you want it. And then if it goes off a little on the edges, it doesn't matter because the still central aspect of the design will still be centered. So, um, However, I also sometimes, especially when I've, I'm teaching classes when I have a bunch of people just playing for a while. And of course, I don't wanna just sometimes, you know, mostly once we, you, we go over how the basics to do it, um, it's not uh, something that most people need much handholding with. So I usually sit on the side waiting for people to have, pro you know, listening to see if people are having problems, but it really basically turns into playtime. And of course, if everyone else is playing, I want to play too. So when that happens, I usually just have a blank piece of fabric and I'll like a piece of linen that I've already washed. And I will actually, you know, draw out grid lines and I'll usually choose a stamp that somebody else isn't using. And I will just like plan it. Um, like the picture that's on the, on the uh, event page, that was actually left over from my, I taught a black printing class and while well, everybody else was having fun and wanting to print enough that they could use pieces on their garb, I just went ahead and block printed that fabric because it was fun, you know? So I would, oh, you can, another thing you can do is you can also, some people use a stamp pad approach where you can actually get like a stamp pad with ink you can do that as well. And you can do it with the speedball inks. Um, I don't do it that way because I got told, you know, I, the directions I had seen this, the first time I thought about doing this wasn't the stamp pad version. I'd been, I'd seen a brayer, I knew what they were and I knew to coat the, the stamp. But I have seen several people do some very nice stamp work, literally using something like a rubber stamp but using, but a stamp pad that they've created. And, you know, so similar to like this, but if I were to do something like that on here, you can take your stamp, push it against something like this with the paint on it and then transfer it to your fabric as well. I personally am impressed when somebody can make this part work as well as they do. But I think it's just like anything else, the more you do it, the better of a feel you get for it. 
and you just have you learn exactly how much pressure to put on to pick up paint without smearing it or making it push off. When I use the stamp pad method, um, I actually use a piece of felt. Okay. Uh, you know, and I will put the paint on, you know, my plate. I put the piece of felt down on top of that. And then I just sit there and play with it until the uh, paint has um, saturated the felt. And then it's just, it's a wonderful little stamp pad that's fast and I get consistent results on every single one. Nice. So yeah, I haven't bothered playing with it because I like my brayer and stuff. And um, do you, you usually use wood or wood stamps and do you use bigger stamps? Uh, you know what? I use uh, wood. I have some acrylic ones that are pretty fun to play with. And then I have some ones that I've carved myself from Lino um, okay. and all of them are wonderful using that method. And okay. I do it because I usually do um, like a full piece of fabric. Yeah. And so I need it to be as fast as I can. The brayer is good for when I do like, you know, bags with like uh, game boards on it or something where I'm doing, you know, one stamp at a time mm -hmm. um, and it gets great coverage. But I love the stamp pad for when you're doing lots of production because it's fast. Okay. That makes much, that makes sense. I still wind up doing the, I just wash my block more often when I'm doing it because it does start to dry a little bit um, on the block and on your, um, or it can, like I said, creep into the crevices on the block. Um, but how wide, how big are the, some of the stamps are you doing? Are you doing like eight or nine inch stamps? I have, uh, my largest one I think is an eight inch. So okay. I haven't gotten bigger than that yet. Um, and then I do ones down to an inch. I prefer to do about the six inch stamps just cause again, where I'm doing everything. I, I don't want to spend a thousand hours block printing a yard of fabric. And you don't want to be like, here, excuse me, will I push for 10 minutes on my stamp? <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. I don't want, you know, my arms are going to fall off after getting, you know, four yeah. stamps in there. When you're doing a big bunch of fabric, even if you're using a smaller stamp, it can turn into a workout. Um, and make yeah. sure you wear some nice gloves on your hands so that the wood uh, doesn't always bite in when you're leaning on them. I actually, I don't, I don't use gloves. Um, but I also have a tendency of dyeing my hands blue when I have diplates too. So <laughs> probably not the best person to be talking as to that. <laughs> um, I've never had any of the wood uh, blocks actually give me splinters or anything, but most of mine aren't really that old. Some of them are getting a little, uh, you know, a little torn up on some of the edges, but none of them have actually gotten raggedy enough that I need to take any sandpaper or anything to them. But um, even the ones that I, you know, I've actually carved myself, I usually just clean them up with a little bit of sandpaper just to make sure that, um, that I'm not giving myself splinters. And sometimes I, sometimes I, I just clean it up with the, with the wood chisel because I already have it handy. So, uh, but yeah, sometimes I actually do like this is actually from my, uh, this is actually like from our war bands device and stuff. So when I do, I actually have my fighting dress. I have this, this sigil is just a singleton and it's, it's printed in just specific spots. And then I have like a single uh, Kaid stamp on it. And then I have, I'm actually going to be adding a single um, uh, cross because this is actually one of the other groups I'm affiliated with. And it works because one side's blue and then I have the Kai Populous badge and the other side's black and then I have my Panteri badge. So, but, um, so any other, I mean, I actually have a bunch of examples of fabric. Um, so, I mean, if you want, I can go over print, uh, pushing it down, you know, pushing the block down again, if you want. But I also don't think that part comes across probably as very complicated but I'm always willing to go back over it as many times as people need. Any other questions or? I know you, your black dress you have printed with white. I was just wondering, is there more problem with white and yellow and stuff printing on darker colors or they all work pretty good? I there? actually have not had much problem with it at all. I get about equal coverage with all of the colors with the white, 
I, it's, it's fairly, you know, it's fairly um, easy to get a decent coverage on it. And part of what helps on that one is that it has somewhat a lot of thin lines. So it tends to stand out a little bit better against the dark, but um, the wider sections that you have on a stamp, this is like the, the problem I had was with one of the lino ones. Those are the ones that I, I'm not as fond of, but even on wood stamps, when I think I've gotten a good press, that's one of the reasons I have the brush for a touch-up and stuff. And I, like I said, I, I will just literally use the paint direct sometimes from the tube, but I also will dip it into water to sometimes spread it a little bit better. So I literally, I'll, I'll treat it like it's acrylic. So if you've ever really done any painting with acrylic, you tend to have, you tend to also sometimes dilute it to get it to sit smoother. I do the same thing when I paint it on fabric. Quick question. How long does the uh, Speedball Lino uh, stay wet or workable? Um, it's actually, it dries fairly fast to the touch. What you will find though, is that it's like, so this one is, if I look at it, this is both mostly dry and I could put my finger on it and it won't come up off my, on my finger. But if I were to fold this piece against itself and let it sit, it would transfer some. So it actually usually dries within like, you know, you know, yeah, about, I would usually, I don't touch it for at least 20 minutes to a half an hour. Um, but and what I will do when I hear, actually, I'm, give me a second, I'll pull up a picture of what I do when I do a ham. Because, um, let me pull up my photo album. So when I do a ham, I usually do half at a time. Um, but I will sometimes push it because I'm lazy and I'm impatient and I hate waiting. So here, let me share my screen now. Okay, so here, if you notice, I've just got a grid line here and then I've just made little dashes, little hash marks. So I can make sure I place my stamp in the right spot. And I literally just folded it to where it's not, the design itself is not touching any other part. But I went through, made my marks, and then I literally will just fan it out. And I will actually walk away from it um, for at least an hour. And then, um, oops. oh, here, some of the others that we've, Played with. Um, don't be afraid to play with color. Color is kind of fun. Um, this is um, one with blue, and this is actually on um, on white linen. It's not obviously perfect. This was actually done with a rubber stamp. Um, that was also a rubber stamp, and I just experimented with overlapping the edges. You know, this is actually done by one of the people who came to uh, play with stamps with me. And, you know, and then this was one for I did for a tunic. So I played with it a few times. I think I have. Oh, so this is the this is the piece I did while I was just playing around in class. And it's actually based off of. Uh, let's see, this is the piece that it's based off of. This is where he got the stamp information. It's a uh, 12th century French. But I found that I found that information by going to Grant's uh, to Grav's website, and that was where I was able to actually see. You know, I I was looking at stamps that I thought would be fun to play with, and then I was like, ooh, that's 12th century. Oh, those two stamps go together. So I kind of had to get them, even though I don't. I don't wear 12th century French, um, but I really liked it. And I have a bunch of friends in the East Kingdom and they're all like, hey, that's a tiger. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so um, 
I definitely wouldn't let it hold you back. A lot of your designs tend to be fairly consistent over time. You, especially if you've got very geometric designs, those are gonna be fairly, you're gonna find geometric designs throughout history because they tend to be fairly easy and they tend to fit many different mediums. Um, you know, the same is true if you're looking at things like tablet weaving or embroidery, you tend to see similar motifs. There are some differences that'll set something apart regionally, um, it, depending on what level of authenticity you're actually trying for. You, you can be as authentic as you want to be on when it comes to the fabric stamping. And I, I, do, I have not played with making my own pigments. I have played in one of the dye play days that I went to, we did play with, um, it was basically a, a paint made using um, like indigo and it actually made really good stamps on the fabric. Um, we had a little bleed at the edges and stuff, but it was fairly consistent. And it wasn't much more bleed than I than you would get with the with the speedball. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of a rough edge, you know. But you can clean that up with a paintbrush. Um, so you can use like period like period pigments for making your own. I just have never gone that deep into it. So, but if you do that, I want to see pictures. For that matter, if you if you do the stamping fabric, I want to see pictures anyways. Okay. Um, so most of you at least know what my name is on Facebook based off of the event. Um, if you have any questions, you're always welcome to contact me. If you send me a friend request, tell me who you are. Okay, I actually don't accept requests from people I have never met. Um, you now I've met you. You can choose to join, send me a Facebook friend request or not. Just be warned, I post a lot of I post a lot of science stuff sometimes, sometimes cat pictures, sometimes jokes, and then sometimes I post a lot of food. So sometimes I post a lot and I'm very annoying. And then other times I probably don't post a lot and I'm probably not that annoying, but somehow people put up with me. So um, any other things that, might, that you can think of that might be a problem or questions that you might have? Oh, here's how, what I mean by you can wind up with stamping off an edge. It doesn't really matter that that's there. If I really wanted to, I could scrub it off. But um, this is actually one of the ones that I use when I go to classes. So I really just haven't really cared about it. And it doesn't transfer onto my fabric. So it does. So stamps do work on other materials other than fabrics. So I have a couple of questions. Perfect. Um, how do you get the soap out of the fabric after you are, after the stamping is done and the paint is dry? Do you just wash it? Yep. Okay. Um, I think it actually says on the tube, but you, I usually wait a week before I wash just because then I know for certain, I just hang it up and walk away for a week. Okay. And stuff, but I think it actually takes 24 hours is when it's supposed to technically be fully cured. I think it's, it might be on the. Let's see, for use on cotton, polyester, blends, linen, rayon, and other synthetic fibers, not for use on nylon, paper and cardboard, can be laundered after uh, drying one week at room temperature. Cold water and mild soap is preferred when laundering. Okay. I wash everything in cold. And with almost, uh, with rare exceptions, I mean, I actually, all my wool is pre-washed. I don't wash my wool aprons very often, but, um, but you know, cause I'll actually hang those out on the clothesline and just beat them for a bit. But um, I have most of the stuff that I've actually stamped has actually maintained the stamping on it fairly solidly. Um, I have one dress that I, that was the first one I did. And that one is showing a little bit of fading and that one's several years old. Okay. So the pattern's still discernible. It's just lighter. So it's not much different than if I were to dye a fabric and then it just fails to be light fast. When you see that gradual fade over time 
after mm -hmm. wearing it. It's somewhat similar to that. And mm -hmm. if I really wanted to, it would probably be more effort than I'm willing to make for a basic underdress, but I could touch it up and make it dark again, just with a paintbrush. But right. I don't think I would actually try and restamp it at that point because I know I'd wind up with blurry lines. Do you find that um, white works better than say silver on top of most fabric colors? I've actually found, okay, silver honestly does not stand out that great. Okay. Unless it's dark fabric. White stands out better if it's medium uh, darkness on fabric. So if it's something like, um, like I have a tan sitting over here white would stand out better on this fabric mm -hmm. than silver will. Okay. So one of the things, the other, other than learning each stamp. So even though, even if I've stamped often for a while, I will still make a test piece. Oh, thank you. I hope, I'm glad it was helpful. And please don't hesitate to reach out. If you do want to email me, the Algitha part of my name at earthlink.net is my email address. Um, otherwise, you can also message me on Facebook. Even without a friend request, I do check my other mailbox. Um, but I thought I would get better. The metallics, I don't like the coverage from them quite as much. I found that the whites and black are actually better at coverage than the metallic ones or the white and the yellow. The yellow stands out like fantastic on a pretty much almost everything I've tried it on. Um, I have the blue I've only ever done on white. Um, you know, this is, I don't know how well this turns out on the screen, but it actually stands out pretty well when I look at it right now. But it would not, from a distance, it would not be very discernible what it is, but it's also a smaller stamp. Um, white stands out fantastic on dark colors. Um, it doesn't stand out quite as well on lighter colors, but it stands out better than silver does. Same with the yellow. So much more, more uh, solid colors tend to work better. However, um, even though it wasn't as well stamped, it was a leftover from a class, um, that, that gold on, that, on the red, was really striking. And the picture I don't think does it ju justice. It actually looks fairly good, especially from a distance, but the gold stood out really good against the red. So a lot of that is going to be playing with the various colors because sometimes I've been, oh, I'm gonna do this in these colors and I'm gonna be like, oh my God, that looks horrible and stuff. But then I'll do the exact same thing and I'll just change up the colors and I'll be like, oh, wow, that color looks really good. So aside from just testing out your stamp, test out your color on the actual fabric that you're planning, because you may be like, oh, yellow will stand out fantastic against this. And you're going to be like, oh, wow, it kind of blends, you know, and if you want to, sometimes you don't want the design to be super striking. And then in which case, then that's perfect. But if you're really wanting the stamp to actually show up you're not going to want it to be blended in. You're going to want it to actually have enough contrast where it stands out nicely. So it's not, it's not much different than if you're holding up fabric, uh, fibers for some kind of like weaving, knitting, crocheting project. Put the colors together, but actually see how the paint works on the fabric because just looking at the color in the tube is not quite the same. It does, with it having a thinner layer on the fabric, some of the color from the fabric is kind of reflecting through. So the color won't always be exactly as true as you might want. Okay, any other? I part? take, uh, yeah. I take black and white photos to show contrast. It's one of the best ways of um, finding contrast is if you take a picture of like whatever colors you're putting together and then turn it black and white on your phone, you'll be able to see it really well if it's gonna show up well or not. I do that with all my tablet weaving. Yeah, that, that, that will also do it. Um, it'll be, it sometimes can be slightly different with the paint if you're just taking a picture of the paint. But if you're taking the picture of the paint on fabric, then you're gonna see how well it contrasts fairly well. 
So any other questions? I mean, technically we have until five. I actually told her one hour and she scheduled it for two. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I was like, oh, okay, I have more time. Um, I did previously mention it's not really done Viking Age. Um, you know, but that said, within the SCA, neither are large pieces of embroidery. And people are usually perfectly fine within the SCA seeing those. I don't, I don't cringe. I don't go up and tell people that, oh my gosh, that's wrong. I have pieces with large embroidery on them, you know, um, and in the SCA, I'm a laurel and it, you know what, I know what my stuff is, it's period. I know what my stuff is, that's not period. And, um, and actually the one piece I have with large embroidery is based off a period thing because a friend made it for me. But um, I, I do use the fabric stamping. I sometimes use it as accents to where it's, it's imitating embroidery. Or sometimes I'll use it for decoration on friends' garbs who have later period. Or, you know, because I'm not going to take the time to do embroidered motifs on something, you know, for a basic tunic that somebody's going to be constantly wearing at a war and watch the embroidery, you know, you know, slowly get dingy or as they, they don't follow any washing instructions and throw it in the washing machine, you know, so... I, I have plenty of I have plenty of guys in the SCA who take fantastic care of their garb, and I know plenty of girls who don't. But if I make something for somebody, I make sure it's completely machine washable, and they can treat it like crap, and it'll survive. Partly because I tend to be the person who wants to be able to throw my stuff in the washing machine. I do. I just don't dry it. I just or I hang dry, and then, then I wash everything on cold. So, but yeah, when you use the speedball ink, you want to wait for a week before washing. Um, literally, after it's been sitting for a few hours, you can hang it up and it's not going to transfer to anything else. Some of the other types of ink options require heat setting, in which case, then at that point, you would need to iron them before you actually, before they're permanent. As far as I know, I don't know that they last any better than the speedball stuff. And I know that sometimes when you're using some of the acrylics, if you don't use a medium to make them a little bit more flexible, sometimes they can crack um, after being painted on, on fabric. So. So wonderful, thank you. And yeah, the metallic, I think one of the problems with coverage is that it doesn't stick quite as well. And that's probably based off whatever they're using for the pigment. Um, the gold sticks better than the silver. So, okay, so any other questions? Um, I mean, otherwise I can call it good, stop the recording, we can hang out or not. Um, but if you have further questions, I always think it's a fantastic thing to have all of questions for other people who may be watching this video later. If you think of other questions that show up as soon as we aren't talking to each other anymore, you can always message me or email me. Um, if sometimes it takes me a bit to get back to you just because you know some of us get distracted and we all get busy sometimes. And unfortunately, I'm really good at that part. Um, but so if you do have other things that come up or you happen to start playing with it and run into some kind of problem, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I've seen probably anything that can go wrong, go wrong, either because I've done it wrong or I ran into some kind of unplanned snafu. Like sometimes I've had fabric that was treated with something that I didn't know about it. And I'll, I do all my stuff is pre-washed fabric but I've had people bring fabric stuff that had treatments on it that prevented the ink from sitting right. So little things like that, if you run into it, sometimes I may have already ran into it too. So if that comes up, please don't hesitate to talk to me. You know, there's no reason that you can't learn from my mistakes or the other mistakes that have come up or just how happenstance occurred. I've got a question about the uh, historical aspects. What okay. 
time periods and cultures would have been using fabric stamping as opposed to something else? Okay, so we do actually have some very early period examples, both old and new world. Um, I know that they did do, we do have examples of fabric stamping from Egypt. Um, yes, I do wash my stamp. And if I'm looking a little twitchy, it's because I'm still looking at my stamp over there that's not washed. <laughs> I know I can get the paint off of it though. So, um, because as long as I've, as long as it's not like several hours, it will come off easy. And the nice thing is it sticks to the wood, but it doesn't stick to the wood as well as it does the fabric. Um, we also do have some examples from New World. I, I want, I don't remember exactly where those ones were. Those ones are, I believe, I want to say Peru, but I might be thinking of a, some older weaving examples. Um, I have, we have some examples um, from some of the uh, like step cultures that we do have some examples of what would most likely be block printed fabrics. Um, there's a Czechoslovakian example I can think of. Um, most of the examples that I've seen of actual extant painted or stamped fabric are European, but they tend to be later period. And I, I realize for many of you, 12th century doesn't seem later, but to me it is um, and stuff. So, but most of the examples that I've seen are there's a, the Italians did quite a bit of it as well as more, more emphasis on fabric painting. Um, and I have seen a lot of examples of that were like 12th through 14th century. I don't think I've seen any examples that were much later than that. Um, and actually there's several examples that are like ninth, 10th century, uh, like Rus. Um, and be careful on that because I would actually take that to mean um, pre-Russian pre rather than always Russian Viking. We don't always have many example areas where the intermingling happened quite as much as the SCA likes to um, assume. But that said, if that's what you want on your garb, I'm going to totally support you. Show off cool creative art. You know, there is a C in, in SCA. Um, that said, I do like it when people do know what is and is not correct for a time period, just because I personally would want to know. If, if I were somebody who was new and I learned this cool embroidery stitch and then I covered every seam known to man in it, I'd actually would kind of like to know that in period, the inside of that really neat looking herringbone stitch was actually on the inside, you know, because it was a set, it was a hemming technique, you know? So even though I think it's pretty and I decided to put it on the outside, I'd like to know that just so I know. So I just assume that most other people would probably want to know that, but I just save it for my classes and I don't tell them that if they're, I rock into them at an event. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So thank you. Awesome. So anything else? Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And if we want, we can hang out and chat for a while. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.